Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the webinar about public transport network and supply planning. This is the first out of six webinars which we are going to give in the next six weeks. My name is Johannes Schleich. Um, I'm responsible for the PDV Visum product management and services team. You can see my email address, is, which is johannes.schleich at pdvgroup.com. So if you have any questions also after the webinar, don't hesitate to contact me. You also can ask questions during the webinar. You can do this using the webinar functionality. Uh, due to the long list of participants, I will not be able to answer the questions during the webinar. So I will send you an answer uh, afterwards, either using the webinar uh, software or contacting you via email. Today we have a 30-minute session about public transport network and supply planning with PTV Visum. I want to give you an overview what we're going to do in the next 30 minutes. After a short introduction about PTV Visum, I want to uh, give you an idea how you can import tr transport supply data into PTV Visum. Then we will have a look how to edit the transport supply using different possibilities within the software. And thereafter, we have a look at different analyses of the transfer supply. Many of you may know PTV Visum. Uh, others even have, may have used it. So the, if I look at the list of participants, I see a wide range of people which I know, some I don't know. Uh, so I'm not sure whether all of you know PTV Visum. PTV Visum is uh, the world leading transportation planning software. Uh, which is used all around the world. Um, so we, the PTV group, uh, which is, has more than 700 employees, employees is pr producing this software now since roughly 30 years. Uh, PTV Visum is used uh, for many applications. So this can be in private transport traffic impact studies, or it can be also for multimodal applications. So for example, for master planning, uh, for the next 20 or 30 years. Today we focus on applications in public transport. The main advantages of uh, PTV Visum for public transport is uh, that it's a comprehensive public transport planning tool. So it has a lot of uh, analyzers functionalities and also a lot of visualization functions. Another important point for modeling and planning is that the software is integrated uh, into your system. So we have a lot of interfaces to maps, so that means to GIS systems, but also to scheduling systems, uh, AFC, AVL, and so on. And finally, of course, we have interfaces to Microsoft Office. But there's not only this kind of interfaces in terms of data, there's also an integration in terms of that different users can use the same software for their application. So that can be, for example, the city government, the transport association, and the transport operating, sharing the same model and sharing the same uh, software. Visum is an, uh, also helps you to be efficient during your projects, doing your modeling projects. Uh, one big advantage due to the completeness of the software is that you have most applications within one piece of software, which makes sure that you have consistency in the data so storage. And also due to our scenario management, it's easy to handle lots of different scenarios uh, for the future. And also, which improves efficiency is the fast model setup, which is possible due to our interfaces. Finally, uh, we offer you strong services. Uh, so that means we have training, documentation, support in many different languages. We have support centers uh, on many continents. Uh, so in Asia Pacific, in China, in Europe, but also in Spanish language, for example, in Lat Latin America. This slide gives you an overview now uh, about our customers. So large customers are, for example, the Deutsche Bahn, German Railway, but also uh, Metro de Medellin or other railway and public transport operators, as well as cities such as Vienna or Zurich.
after this short introduction, I now want to uh, go more into detail into, uh, about the importing of supply data. Once you have defined the objective of your project, the objective of your model, the uh, second question is always, how do I get the data into my model? Where can I get the data from? For this, uh, there is a couple of data sources you can use. Uh, one is to import data from free web sources. This can be OpenStreetMap or Google Transit feeds. Another data source can be uh, from other software uh, systems. So they can have exporters to Visum or Visum has a couple of importers uh, for such software systems. This can be Harfast, Diva, RailML, but also competitors software. And finally, if you have your timetable, for example, only in an Excel format, this is also not a problem. You can transfer uh, this Excel format, for example, to a database, uh, Access database, or to ASCII, but which means text files. Um, so these interfaces and this open and clearly described data, data formats, which we have in Visum, then allows you to import any kind of data you have, and then to use Visum as a data hub for your applications. So with this, you have a quick start uh, for your model, and then you can focus on the applications, uh, which includes public transfer supply and demand analysis or operation optimizations. Now let's have a look at a hands-on example. So I choose for this uh, city of Chicago, uh, because for the city of Chicago, the data is openly available on the web. So what you can do uh, is you can navigate to the Google Transit data feed website, and there you find a long list of cities where you can download the Google Transit feed. So these are lots of US cities, but also cities like, uh, like Madrid uh, and uh, cities from Hungary and many other cities which openly and free, freely available post their data feed on this website. Of course, there are many more web cities having uh, Google Transit feeds. Then you have to ask the public authorities to get the data. Once you have the data, you can go to Visum, and within Visum, you simply say, I'm uh, going to import the Google Transit feed. All you have to do is to define the folder where you have stored the Google Transit, um, Transit feed data, and then you can start the import. Uh, so I have to, I have prepared this already uh, because it takes a couple of minutes to import this. And what you can see here is now the information from the Google Transit feed. And if you look at this network, this is the Chicago network which a total, with a total of 12,000 different stops. And if we go closer into detail, we see uh, that we have very detailed information on the links, but also uh, on the stop position. So if we're loading here, for example, a background uh, from, uh, from Bing Maps, for example, we will see uh, how detailed this is. We exactly we see that uh, the the root course is exactly following the street layout, and we even can see that the position of the bus stops is very detailed. So this is a quick start for importing data for public transport. You can do the same also for private transport. In private transport, I've used. Uh, OpenStreetMap to import the data and this is what you can see here uh, also prepared for you uh, on uh, in, in Visum. This is the network from uh, Chicago uh, covering the full, full area of Chicago and having these two sources that means private transport and public transport allows you then to match those two uh, networks uh, in order to, uh, to put them into one integrated network model. Here you can use, for example, the PDV Visum map matcher, um, which we have shown you, for example, during 
the uh, user group meeting last month here in Karlsruhe. Due to the limited time, I will skip this point uh, for the webinar. Now let's go to the next point in the agenda, which is the editing of the transport supply. For this, I'm using an example which you also find uh, in your uh, in the installation folder of Visum, so you can use this example also if you want to uh, try public transport in Visum after this webinar. First of all, you see a network for the private transport, and now we want to have a closer look how Visum represents the public transport in the network. For the stops, we have, uh, you can see it at the left side, different network objects. So the first one are stops. So if I'm activating the layer of stops. I can see that there is a, uh, that we have uh, a couple of stops in our network. But this is not detail enough. And if we look, for example, here at the stop, which is called uh, at the main station, we can see that this stop uh, actually has not only one point where the vehicles are stopping, we actually have several of them. And this is what how this is reflected in Visum by so-called stop points. Uh, so we can see a list of uh, a number of stop points where the vehicles actually stop. So this can be here from the tram system or here from the railway system but also um, for the bus systems, which stop, stop at the main station. Between the stop points and the stop areas, we have a layer which we call stop areas. Such stop areas combine different uh, stop points into one geographical area. Having these stop areas allows us then to define for each stop, uh, the walk times between the stop areas. And by this, we can then uh, realistically model transfer uh, relations. We also can see the, the walk, we can show the walk times also in a graphical view, as you can see it here uh, within Visum. So that means we have a hierarchical, hierarchical system for stops, consisting of stop, stop areas, and stop points. Uh, however, if we have only a sim if we only need a simple uh, representation of our public transport network, it can also be enough, as you can see it, for this stop uh, to have only one stop, one stop point, and one stop area to represent a stop. So it really depends on what you want to do if you have a focus on transfer relations and transfers at stops, then it's good to have this information on uh, on the walk times in between these stop areas. If you look more at the operational level, it may be enough to have just one stop point, one stop area, and one stop. If we then look at the representing uh, representation of the public transport lines, uh, here we see uh, that we also have a uh, system of different layers. The highest layer uh, I will show you today is, are the lines. Uh, so each line can be shown in the network. So if you look at this bus line B31, we can see that it's going from the east to the west and the other way around. The geographical representation is done by so-called line routes. Uh, so we have, in this case, we have two directions, one westbound and the other one, uh, which is the eastbound direction. So these are the first two layers, lines and line routes. Uh, the other layers uh, can be found if we are going to edit one line route. Uh, there we can see that we ha can define time profiles. So in this case, we only have one time profile. And these time profiles define the run and the stop times in, um, for, uh, for each stop and for each uh, um, run time between the stop. 
Sometimes it's necessary to have several time profiles, uh, for example, to reflect uh, longer run times during the peak hours. Once we have defined a time profile, we can also define different journeys for each of these time profiles. That means if we look at the hierarchy for the public transport data model of lines, we will see uh, that we have on the highest level lines, then we have can have different line routes, so for example for the two directions, but also for some special line routes, for example in the morning going to the uh, going to the uh, to, to the school. Then we can have different time profiles, for example for morning and afternoon peak, and finally we have our vehicle journeys. Of course, if, if we want to add or if we want to edit uh, the timetable, uh, one good starting point for this is the tabular timetable editor. So if we open the timetable editor for our line route B31, uh, we will see uh, that we have a list of journeys here. So this tabular view shows us that between, for example, uh, 441 and 522 we have a headway of 10 minutes uh, which sums up to five vehicle journeys. Thereafter we have a headway of five minutes and then it's four minutes and so on and so forth. If we want to add another vehicle journey we simply can add this and all we need to define due to this um, due to this data model is that we say okay it's this line this direction and all we need to do is now to enter a new start time so for example 3:30 in the morning and then we can define the start stop point and the end stop point and can click on okay and then we will see in the first column uh, we will see the new vehicle journey which starts at 3.30 and the rest is automatically calculated from the time profile uh, which makes it very easy to manage data uh, for public transport. A common view in public transport supply data is also the graphical timetable. Uh, this is also available in Visum so you can see we now uh, see in red highlighted the vehicle journey which we just have entered into the timetable. We can see the arriving and departing time of each stop and we see that uh, starting from roughly 5 we have a high, uh, high frequency uh, of the vehicle journeys. We can see that here we have a headway between 5 and 6. We have a headway of roughly 10 minutes thereafter uh, the headway goes uh, goes up to only five minutes. For those which are used to a uh, horizontal graphical timetable, um, this is also available in Visum. Uh, so this simply depends on how you're used to it and how you want to use it. Again, we can uh, add here also uh, the other direction and then we can see f uh, that we have vehicle journeys in both directions. So we have another view in the timetable editor which is the block view. This is what you're going to see in a webinar about line blocking. We go back uh, to, to our overview. The last point I wanted to show you is now the line course editing. So if we want to change the line course, we can do this in the network editor. Uh, so for example, if we want to extend uh, this line course, uh, we can simply do this in the network editor by editing the shape of the line course. and if we say we want to extend this by one stop, uh, we simply, or by a couple of stops, we can do this and Visum will automatically find 
the best uh, best route between those stops. This was an overview about editing the transport supply. Uh, if we have uh, modeled, for example, the current situation or in future situation, uh, then we want to analyze the transport supply. For this, Visum offers a wide range of uh, analyzing methods. Uh, many of them are graphical, others are analytical. I want to give you an overview about some of them. First of all, we will look at the analysis of the service quality. For this, we will look at stop catchment areas and also and isochrones. If we go back to our example, we can see that we have a certain number of stops and a usual analysis is that we say we want to analyze the stop catchment areas. That means we assume that people are ready to go to walk, for example, 300 meters to a bus stop or 400 meters and maybe 800 meters to the main railway station. For this, there are graphic parameters which can be defined. Um, so you can see this now on the screen. Uh, we have uh, for each stop area, we have a catchment area defined. The green one is the main station, which has the largest uh, the largest radius. This allows us then to identi identify weak points in our network where the public transport coverage is not as good as it could be. Of course, we can then also intersect this uh, with land use data like inhabitants or workplaces. If we move on to the next analysis, which is the isochrones, I first turn off the stop catchment areas and then we can run the graphical analysis on either crones. For this we can define for example that we want to look at the main station and what we want to see is other travel times from the main station to all points in our network. We can run this and we then activate the layer of the isochrones and then we see a quick overview about the accessibility to the main station uh, from all parts of our network. So we can see that across certain public transport lines, for example in the east-west direction, the accessibility seems to be good, while the accessibility, for example, in the northeastern part is not that good as it could be. Of course, we can run this uh, isochrone analysis not only on one destination or origin point, we can do it also uh, for different ones. So if we want, for example, to analyze the accessibility to one of the four existing shopping malls in this city, we can activate all stops which are related to the shopping malls and then we can run uh, the accessibility, the isochrone, isochrone's calculation for these different stops. This is allowing you to have a view about uh, accessibility uh, for public transport. Of course, you can export this information to GIS system if you want to intersect it uh, with other system, but also you can use intersect functionality within Visum. Also, what is uh, also possible is that you use, uh, that you're not only looking at the accessibility in terms of travel time. This example shows you also the accessibility in terms of trans number of transfers, showing different colors for the stops depending on the number of trans transfers from our starting point. And as said before, we can then also intersect this with land use data within Visum. This was a quick overview about service quality. We will go deeper into this 
uh, when we next week we'll have a look at the public transport assignments. Then we can also consider demand, uh, so the passengers to describe the service quality. This is the second webinar next week. If we now look also at the operational uh, point of view, uh, we have different possibilities here to assess the quality. The first one uh, is now more analytical. Um, and this is about public transport indicators. So if we want to evaluate the public transport network, we often need uh, to know indicators such as um, service kilometers or number of vehicle journeys in our network. For this, we have a procedure. And you can open this procedure in the procedure view. And here we have the procedure which is called POT, which means Public Transport Operation Indicators. If you go to the parameters of this, um, of this operation, you see that you can calculate the indicators on different levels. So it can be territories, it can be territories also um, um, per line, per line route, or per vehicle journey, per transport system. So you have different levels where you can look these indicators. You see here uh, at the uh, at the uh, at the later tabs in this parameter that you also can calculate revenues or infrastructure costs. For revenues, you need a fair model. We speak about this in another webinar. I think it's in two or three weeks. Um, you can also calculate infrastructure costs, um, and these costs uh, consists of, for example, stop costs and also link costs. If we leave this to the standard feature, uh, standard setting, and if we then run this procedure, it automatically calculates uh, all indicators, and then we can go to the list of lines. Uh, you can see this here, for example. For each, for each uh, line, we have uh, one line in this table. You see the number of departures. You can see the average speed of uh, this line. So we have with the line B21, we have an average speed of 23 kilometers per hour. For other lines like B28, the value is much lower. Then we see the vehicle kilo service kilometers uh, for each line. And thereafter, then we see the number of vehicles uh, which are required for the line. This re requires a uh, line blocking analysis. Uh, which is also uh, part of our webinar series. If we now go back to a graphical analysis of our network from the operational point of view, uh, we have in Visum uh, for you the possibility to show the network on a schematic uh, view. So this schematic view uh, this is also an example from the installation uh, folder, so you can open it if you have Visum installed. Is uh, is a view which allows you, which abstract the reality to a necessary and uh, level. So here you, for example, see the different lines. You can see with a small lattice the arriving and departing uh, times of each line, the number of lines. Uh, uh, represent the frequency and you also can see for example that at Tulla Straße uh, this S4 sometimes stop and that there are other express uh, lines, uh, express journeys of this S4 which pass by Tulla Straße. So this gives you a quick and schematic overview. It's in particular allows you to coordinate the different lines at the different stops in order to optimize the transport supply for the passenger. If we go back to the overview, we have seen service quality and operational quality, and we have seen different analyzers for these, um, uh, for these two categories. If I'm now going to summarize what we have seen today, we have seen uh, that Visum has lots of interfaces in order to import existing data. 
so if you have a large network you never want to do it manually if you have a large network it's always good to start for example with OpenStreetMap network data for private transport or with data uh, from Excel from Google Transit or whatever data is available there are several options to edit the network uh, so it can be in the network editor to change the, uh, the root course, it can be in the timetable editor to change uh, the journeys and finally and important of course are the analyzers of the transport supply so this was today purely focused on transport supply not considering the demand but what we have seen is that we already have lots of possibilities to analyze the network only having the transport supply for example using isochrone analysis. As I said, the, so far we haven't considered the demand. Considering the demand will be part of the next webinar where we talk about assignment methods in PTV Visum. This will be on 24th of October at 10 uh, Central European time. Thereafter the webinar series will proceed with fair modeling and line blocking and in the end two more webinars are coming. If you want more information besides these webinars you're invited to join our user group meetings in Hong Kong, Singapore, Melbourne in November, also in Strasbourg and France and many other uh, user group meetings uh, in the near future. You also can check out the website pdvision.com or the special public transport website under pdvvision.com slash put. There you can download a trial version. This trial version includes all modules, uh, but also you can get in contact with us um, if you need further information. If you have installed Visum either uh, as, a, as a client or with a trial version, also have a look at the installation folder. And there you find an overview document about the newest features. You also find out lots of examples uh, short trainings, longer tutorials about, for example, the schematic line diagram, but also about assignments, fair modeling, and so on. So it's always worth looking in this installation folder if you want to start with Visum. In particular, if you're new to Visum and if you start with a trial version, I re recommend you to go to the doc folder. Uh, there you can find the quick start, uh, which gives you a quick overview about the capabilities of Visum. Thanks again for attending this webinar. I hope it was interesting for you. Uh, for me, it was uh, amazing to see how many people are interested from all around the world. Um, I hope to see you again next week uh, in, the, uh, in the next webinar, but also in the webinars in the upcoming weeks. You see here again my email address. Feel free to contact me via email if you have any questions. But also, I'm now going to answer the questions uh, through the webinar software. I wish you a good day and thanks for attending. Goodbye.